morning. I love mornings like this. It's a little windy, a little chilly, at least for California, 61 degrees. <laughs> a little overcast. Kind of like the way I used to enjoy going to school. I remember when I was younger, I used to have to <clears throat> walk to school because it was almost as far to walk to the bus stop as it was to walk to school. For some reason, they had some kind of three mile or I don't know how many miles it was that you had to be away from school in order to take the bus. But I do remember having to walk and out in a place called Norco. It was kind of a country town. It was uh, as much as California could have a country town in Southern Cal. It had dirt roads and or dirt roads. It had, instead of sidewalks, it had dirt for the horses. And uh, it was fun walking because in the morning it was always overcast. And sure enough, by noon it would burn off. But it always seemed like it was foggy in the fall. And I remember walking and just enjoying the chill. You know, and then as you walked, you felt warmer. Well, today, I like the weather because it makes the coffee taste better. <laughs> but there are for some people, I know that overcast days and colder weather sometimes affects arthritis or it reminds you that you're getting old or that you feel kind of down and out. And for some people, you know, having the weather change or having it inclement, meaning that it's not sunny or but that it's changing or it's in the process of maybe a storm coming, bothers some. Me, I always loved the storm. <laughs> when I lived in Alaska, it was like, oh yeah, cool. You know, we'd get some real gale blusters up there, you know, where you could be out there, you know, when I was far in the north of Alaska, like up in Nome, you know, you could, or even in Bristol Bay, you know, you could be out on the flight deck and tarmac, actually, not flight deck, that's Navy, but out on the tarmac in the airport and uh, it'd be 40 below, you know, and we'd get 30 mile an hour winds, 40 mile an hour winds, 50 mile an hour winds, <laughs> and guess who was out there, you know, and even when there was a 60 mile an hour wind, I'd have to go out in these tanks, you know, which was pretty incredible. And because I was a fuel truck driver and I'd fuel up the jets, and different airplanes, helicopters also, I would uh, have to open up this tank and put a dipstick in it, you know, to check and see, you know, how much fuel was in it. I had to take a reading every day. When you got up on that tank and that wind was blowing and it was freezing cold, you had your clothes on. <laughs> Do you have your clothes on today? Have you put on the full armor of God? <laughs> if not, put a hoodie on. Put yourself warm. But the thing that that reminds me of is that, irregardless, for some people, sunny weather is what they need. You know, they, they flourish in the sun. For other people, we enjoy the devastating times, those tragedies that seem to come into life because it's almost like it's designed for us, you know, that we are able to deal with those things in a more prepared way, I guess you could say. We're the first responders, so to speak, that God has used us in moments where really the crisis is what we're good at. And in the everyday things, it's kind of, oh, you yeah, know, that's cool, you know, <laughs> God needs you there, you know. But for me, I know that a lot of times I stayed away from my sisters and my family because while I was good for them in crisis, the everyday things was more their style. You know, I was more there for times of need. And God wants to meet you not just in your crisis time, but he wants to meet you throughout the time. Morning, noon, night, all through the day and all through the night. He wants to be with you always because he is planned out an eternity where you're going to fellowship with him in everything. You're going to know that he's been with you all along. And maybe today your day isn't quite sunny and bright, 
But if you wait long enough, at least here in California, the sun will come out. <laughs> Looks like it's already trying to. And the same thing is true with the Lord. He will invade your day and cause you to come to a place where you'll be able to see and know him if you were looking for him to reveal, as it were, to you himself. Because he will. All you got to do is ask him. He's always with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Hear my answer. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come unto you. The cry of the human soul is never unheard. It is never that God does not hear the cry, but that man fails to hear the response. Like parts of a machine made to fit into each other and to work in perfect harmony, so is the human cry and the response from God. But man treats his cry as if it were a thing alone, to be cast up or cast out like a fishing hook and hope that there's a connection. To be heard or not as it pleased God, not realizing that the response was there in all of eternity, awaiting the cry and only man's failing to heed God or to listen to him and kept unaware of the response and unsaved and unhelped by it. All that we need do is to ask and we shall receive, to seek and we will find, to knock and the door shall be open. Sometimes it's just as easy as to say, Lord, look at the clouds. And God says, wait on me and I will bring the wind and the clouds will part, the sun will shine. And once again, you'll be there in my joy sublime. But likewise, in the time that you find yourself in anxious need, do you not realize that that is why I died? I was whipped and I bled and did bleed for you. Oh God, my God, not just hear my cry, but open the ears of my ears and open the heart that I have and cause my eyes to see. And in all of these, you were with me in all these things. Did you know that? <laughs> you can be like a little kid just kind of held to God's hands, you know, just, you can just cuddle up into your father's arms today. No matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, whether in the hottest desert or the frigid cold, whether cloudy days or sunny, whether in the rain or in the sunshine, the hail, the tornadoes, the hurricanes. <laughs> Whatever it is, God, your God and my God, our Father, loves you so much. He's more than willing to be with you. The question is, do you want him to? He wants to. Where are you? He's asking. Wouldn't you like to meet with him today?